Yes, you can get 100% for migraines and qualify for IU with migraines alone outside of the normal criteria for ind individual unemployability. Everyone always, always, always talks about migraines and it's always this. Well, here's what I did and here's what you should do. The problem with that is no two cases are the same. And when people talk about migraine journals and speaking with your healthcare provider, usually the advice they give is actually wrong and goes against VA policy. So today we are going to pull up the actual policy for migraines, not just 38 CFR. Okay. 38 CFR um, will tell you how conditions are rated, which is cool and all, except the meat and potatoes, especially for a disability like migraines, is actually found in the M21 TAC one. So we're going to pull this big dog up, okay? And here it is. I'm going to leave a link for this in the pinned comment. But what I want to show you is when you scroll down here, M21 part five, you can read all that. You're going to see migraine headaches. Go ahead and click on migraine headaches. And boom, this change was September 14th of 2023. We'll get down to the individual unemployability piece. But what I want to show you is the VA talks about everything for migraines to include your healthcare provider and medical reports and migraine journals. So let's take a deep dive into what this thing actually says. Okay, so migraines are rated under 8100 diagnostic code that everyone knows what that is okay it's rated at 50 30 10 or zero percent now the 50 percent you'll see completely prostrating and guess what the m21 actually defines what completely prostrating looks like and then just prostrating so there is a difference between completely prostrating and prostrating now this part is what everyone always talks about right about using sick days and all that stuff which is which is good and all, but let's see what the policy actually says because it's much more than just using your sick days, okay? So let's go ahead, head back to the M21 TAC one, and I'm just gonna read straight from the horse's mouth here and then translate that Barney style, right? So evaluations depend primarily on, there's an and statement here, so it's both, the frequency of attacks and the degree to which the symptoms are prostrating. We're going to define that here in a second, according to M21 TAC1, not anyone else's definition, okay? There's a court case there. You can look at it. It's it's pretty long if you want to read, but this sums up what that what's in that court case, okay? And the two main bullets are the VA rater is going to consider all symptom experience as a result of migraine headaches. That's another thing I want to talk about is M21 TAC1. The CMP examiner ain't got nothing to do, do with this. This is completely on the VA Raider side of the house, okay? So keep that one in mind. Evaluate those symptoms based on the overall frequency, severity, and economic impact of migraine attacks. Okay, so it pretty much just restates the 30 and 50% criteria. There's an example there. You can go ahead and read that. Now, prostrating means, I'm going to read it verbatim, causing extreme exhaustion, powerlessness, debilitation, or incapacitation with substantial inability to engage in ordinary activities. Those words, I thought I was not going to be able to read them. Okay. Completely prostrating. And here we go. If you're looking at the 50% criteria, this is what you need to be focused on means extreme exhaustion or powerlessness with essentially total inability to engage in ordinary activities okay now ordinary activities yes work is a part of that but you can see how that's a bit different from with very frequent uh completely prostrating and prolonged attacks productive of severe economic and adaptability so completely prostrating there it's more refined here in my opinion with the exhaustion and powerlessness with essential total and adaptive or inability to engage in ordinary activity so it's more than just that taking sick days okay now yes if you are using your pto or sick days for work absolutely throw that in there and guess what the m21 covers that specifically so we're going to see what they have to say about it okay 
So although prostration is substantially defined by how the disabled individual subjectively feels and functions when having migraine headache symptoms, medical evidence, listen to this, everyone says I'm crazy because I say go to your primary care for even for increases, okay? Medical evidence is required to establish that the reported symptoms are due to these service-connected migraine headaches. Medical evidence are key, okay? And it talks about um, medical statements right here. And it gives you an example. And there's a note down here that I want everyone to pay attention to. Um, so the following is, is, is an example of a medical statement from your primary care, right? Or your CMP examiner. My opinion, don't rely on your CMP examiner. I'm going to tell you to go get medical evidence from your primary care. But you can go ahead and read that. It talks about symptoms, head pain, blur, blurred vision, nausea, vomiting, all that stuff, okay? The most important piece is this note down here. Note, medical reports may not use the word prostration, okay? So if a medical report um, can't use the word prostration, do you think a personal statement should use the word completely prostrating? The answer is no, okay? In my opinion, it's no. We'll see what policy has to say about that because it talks about statements in support of your migraine claim. And guess what? Completely prostrating is not in there, okay? So the prostration um, aspect, it's for basically referring to it an, an adjudicative determination by the VA, right to go ahead and determine your rating that's all that's all prostration means as far as va rating disability is concerned a claimant's own testimony that is your statement your personal statement your lay statement your buddy statements whatever this is specifically talking about your statement so a personal statement 4138 this is it okay when having symptoms can establish okay can establish prostration as long as the testimony is credible and symptoms are otherwise com um, competently attributed to migraine headaches through medical evidence. I'm going to read that part at the end. Through medical evidence. Stop submitting increases for migraines without having medical evidence. Stop it. Okay. Get your medical evidence. And the VA is telling you right here. Make a personal statement. Make sure what's in your statement supports your medical evidence, okay? And it gives you an example. There's three of them. One, experiences severe headaches and vomiting when exposed to light. Two, does not engage in activities when this occurs. And three, must rest or sleep during these episodes. The resting and sleeping part really does lend, lend the side of prostration and completely prostrating migraines if there is medical evidence that the claimant's description of symptoms is in fact symptoms of migraine headaches a determination that the headaches cause prostration can be made there we go so should you use the word prostration in your personal statement that answer is no okay should you go to your primary care and talk about how your migraines are prostrating that answer is no times a billion right because it says right here this ain't me saying it. This is the VA saying it. So stop taking advice from people who don't know what they're talking about, um, specifically on various apps like Facebook um, and other social media platforms, okay? Now let's talk about the 100% mark because it talks about severe economic inadaptability and it, just, it um, gives the de definition, right? Denotes a degree of substantial work impairment. It does not mean... The individual is incapable of any substantially gainful employment. So you can still work with the 50% migraine. Solid. Okay. Evidence of work impairment includes, but is not necessarily limited to, the use of sick leave or unpaid absence. So there you go. All right. And there's a case down here if you want to ch ch check it out. But it gives you a note. Notes are important. In cases where migraine headaches meet the criterion of severe economic inadaptability, and additionally, the evidence shows that the claimant is incapable of substantially gainful employment due to the headaches. Referral for consideration of an extra scheduler award of a total evaluation based on what is it? Individual unemployability, IU, is appropriate. So yes, migraines can get you 100% rating if you truly do 
um, your migraines cause severe economic and adaptability. Okay. Um, and the claimant is incapable of substantially gainful employment. Yes, migraines can give you 100%. There's a case right there. If you want to go ahead and click that link and check it out. And that's really what I wanted to hit on because everyone always talks about this right here, prostrating that and I can't see with light and I'm sensitive to sound, which which all of that sucks. Okay, I'm not I'm not saying it doesn't suck because it does, but the VA tells you exactly how to craft your personal statement and exactly how to speak to your VA or your healthcare provider, whether that's VA or private. Okay. Take that into consideration. I hope this video helps. I'm also going to link a video as to evidence that you can use to go from 0% to 50% on migraines. Yes, it'll work if you're 10 or 30, but it pretty much goes over medication, which is hard medical evidence, and your personal statement and migraine journals. That is one thing I actually forgot, though. Migraine journals are also used in here. Let me go ahead and look at this. I'm not even going to edit this out because why? Here we go. Because I ain't got time. That's why. Headache journals. There we go. What should be in your headache journal? Okay. Headache journals, which routinely and relatively, um, I'm not even going to try for that one. Record headache episodes may be accepted as credible, may be accepted as credible lay testimony regarding the frequency, the prostration, and occupational impairment like sick leave due to headaches okay so prostration remember you're prostrating like symptoms note headaches recorded on non-work days may be used to prove frequency and prostate prostration so if you're already off like on a weekend or whatever your job looks like technically you're not using sick leave um, or unpaid absence however they will not generally be relevant to work availability there we go so yes understand prostration prostrating causing extreme exhaustion so if you instead of saying i have completely prostrating migraines in your statement okay what you need to be talking about is either prostrating or completely prostrating whichever one you fall into talk about your extreme exhaustion your powerlessness or your essentially um total inability to engage in ordinary activities that's what your statement should be talking about not using words like prostration because again prostration is used it's used as an adjudicative process